Hey guys, it's Charles Osterlin here with Liquid Blue Cabaretti in Cabaretti and today we're going to be updating our original wing foiling video to now a new updated version of our wing foiling video. So let's go. So a lot of people since the video I made back in 2020 or 2019, forget when it was, have been asking for more advice and a more sort of complete guide. And that's what I'm gonna do for you today. As you can see, we're here on a normal day in Cabaret Day. We got lots of kites out and it's great. We're gonna begin on the beach. So some of the basics will not be mentioned, some will, but we're gonna be rolling from, if you're someone who wants to learn how to wing foil and you're by yourself, or you're just looking for some uh, pre-information before you get into the sport, then this is gonna be the video that you're gonna wanna listen to and then maybe even follow if you're gonna practice. So here we are, I got a five meter F1 swing V2 and I got my pump to begin. When you get into wing foiling, it's gonna be important that you have a pump and that you have a good one. So some of the basics of knowing where the wind is coming from it's gonna be hard to mention for you in this video but basically to know where the wind is coming from you can hear it in your ears so if I want to know exactly where the wind is coming from I'm gonna look until I can see and hear wind going into both of my ears so now I can tell that the wind is coming from this general direction and I'm gonna be working with my wing downwind of me when I'm gonna be pumping it up So, luckily we got a brand new wing here. Let's see how it is. So you're gonna wanna undo your wing and you're gonna wanna undo it downwind from you. If I do it this way, you see it flies into me. So it doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna work downwind. Alrighty, we got our wing. On this F1 wing, we have two valves. We have a dump valve for the center strut, so we're gonna make sure we close that. Gonna get here, pop that in, close it down, great. With F1, we have a push valve, so all I'm gonna have to do is push that valve to close it, and bring it down. When I'm gonna pump up my wing, I'm gonna make sure to attach it, so it's nice and secure. Grab my hose, make sure no sand. And we're gonna pump this up. So sometimes people are wondering, how hard do I have to pump my wing? What's the right amount? If you use a pump, a modern one, they usually have a valve, a pressure valve. And I'll be able to tell you how much PSI, how much pressure you have in your wing. And luckily, F1 also rec gives you a recommended PSI, which is eight for this 5.5 .5 meter. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna pump this up. I'm gonna pump it up to eight. Alrighty, there we are. It's pumped up to eight, it's looking good. At this point, the wind is not that strong, but regardless, I'm not gonna wanna let go of the equipment. So I'm gonna hold my wing, take off my adapter, my leash, close my cap, and then we're good to go. Now what's gonna be important here is to put on the wrist leash. The wrist leash, sometimes people wonder, what hand should I put it on? Should it be on my left? Should it be on my right? This is a personal preference thing. For the conditions we have here, and my personal preference, I like to have it on my left hand. And from there, now we have the wing in our hands and it's nice and pumped up. 
So as you can see, I have the wing downwind from me, not into the wind because it's not going to work. So this is something, if you're new to wind sports, it's important to understand where's the wind coming from so you know what to do. So now that I have the wing in my hands, as you can see, when I hold this center handle, the wing is pretty neutral. Just as if I let it go, it sort of just flies around. So this is something important to remember that when you hold just one handle on the leading edge of the wing, it's sort of neutral, doesn't really do anything. As we can tell on this wing, we have two handles, a front and a back one. Our front handle also, if held by itself, is generally neutral. And with this handle, what it's going to be doing, it's going to be somewhat of a power handle and also a little bit of steering. And then you're going to see what I'm going to mean here. So once I apply my backhand, my backhand helps me with power and steering. And what happens here is that a lot of people, when they first grab the wing, they're going to have a lot of sort of mistakes where they're really going to be tensed up and they're going to be pulling and they're going to be doing all types of things that they shouldn't really be doing. To give it to you quickly and basic, your front hand, you're going to want to keep it nice and loose with a little bit of hold, but not really holding it nice and holding it tight and being very uh, fighting it. You just want to have it sort of floating there. Your back hand, you're going to have it a little bit more engaged. As you can see, my elbow is a little bit more bent and I'm sort of applying a little bit of pressure, a little bit of weight to it with my front hand extended and my back hand a little bit bent for control. Now, one common thing is that people think that doing motions with their wrists does something. And as you can tell, it does nothing other than make me uncomfortable. So your, your hands are essentially controlling the wing with the handles, but they're controlling it in a way of where your shoulders and your arms are sort of directed if they're a little bit in front of you, if they're a little bit above you, this affects it. And then also, there's a bit of a twirl motion here where if I, if I pull my back hand or push it forward, the wing does move in some sort of way. And this helps me with control. So I'm going to go over here, just so you see this, that if I use my wrists, nothing happens. But now, if I not only pull, but also pull in various directions in the sense of pushing down or or pushing down and pulling up or pushing down and pulling up it affects differently in this case when I'm here just on the beach what I'm doing here is going to be somewhat similar to what I'm doing in the water so with my front hand as I mentioned it acts as a steering handle a bit of a guide but my back hand does most of the steering where if I move my back hand in front of me like, this, like so, you see it's making my arms do, it's making my wing do something, which is moving. So from a steering standpoint, what's gonna be happening here is that your back hand gives power, right? So if I pull down, it gives power. And my front hand, if I pull down, it does not give me power. It actually loses power. So it does the opposite. Now, if I were to switch sides, the, op the same thing is true, which is you don't want to be getting confused with your left hand and your right hand because the conditions might change and the spot you're riding at might change. So it's always good to be thinking in front hand and back hand standpoints. My back hand helps me steer, also gets power, and then my front hand acts a bit as a guide and in a way affects the power because if I shorten my front hand I lose power and if I extend it I have the power that the wing can deliver to me. So now if I was going to be learning and messing around on the beach some of the exercises I'm gonna to want to do is first getting in control of the wing being comfortable with it. So as you can see here I have the wing it's not doing anything I'm in control and comfortable. If I let go of it, nothing really happens. You already see it in the video. Nothing really happens. 
I can pull my way back and I can get to it. Now, when you get to want to control your wing, I recommend that you use the opposite hand of wherever you're going, so your back hand essentially to hold the wing. So I'm gonna be going out to sea here. My back hand will be my left hand. So what I'm gonna do is hold the wing with my, with my back hand, in this case my left hand. I'm gonna pull it up to me so I can get to my front handle with my front hand. And I'm gonna bring the wing over and grab it with my back hand and be in the position. So the first exercise is just being on the beach and being comfortable. As we can see here, someone is practicing right above us, right over here, practicing some exercises just to get more control of the wing. Feeling the wind, seeing where they're at, and getting control. So once we get comfortable with the wing, some exercises are gonna be keeping it steady, bringing it down close to the sand, which in the future will be the water, bringing it above our heads, walking with the wing, turning around, walking back. and so forth until we're comfortable. It's very important to be comfortable with the wing because once we get to the board, we're gonna be opening up a whole nother can of worms, which we're gonna to wanna to make sure that at least we have this part down. So being comfortable, like I mentioned, with the wing down in front of you, with the wing above your head, switching hands, and staying in control. When you go one way or the other, your controls or what you're doing with your hands are gonna be changing. So it's important to be comfortable with it because generally people are gonna dominate one side easier than they can dominate the other. So you wanna make sure that you're fluid, that you know what you're doing, that you're comfortable on both sides before getting into the water. More time you spend here on the land, better you're gonna do in the water. All righty. So, once you get the wing control, you're gonna wanna do one thing. Here, luckily in Cabarete, we have decent wind. We have wind speeds averaging 15 to 20 knots almost year round, 300 days plus. So we're a little bit spoiled. There's some places that have lighter wind and there's some places that have stronger wind. So in this case, since we have sort of very fair, good conditions, everything is somewhat a little bit easier for us because it's more consistent. So knowing your spot is crucial to being able to perform where you're gonna be practicing. So you wanna know how the wind operates, does it go off, is there wind shadows, what are the waves doing, all this information, which is sort of having a spot check. So in any case, now that we have the wing and we have control, we're gonna to wanna to be able to generate power. So how would we generate power? Now we saw that if I shorten my front hand, I lose power. So my front hand's not gonna really help me. In this case, my back hand is where I'm gonna be able to generate some power. When you're considering to generate power, there's sort of two ways to go about it. Two primary ways. You have pulling down with your back hand, down to your hip. So you're gonna wanna get in front here. So pulling with my back hand down to my hip will be one way of generating power. It does look like I'm using my front hand, but I'm not. I'm just simply reacting with my back hand, getting power. And you see, that already wants to pull me out of the way. The other way that you can generate power when you're wing foiling is using both of your hands. So if I use both of my hands, I'm trying to scoop the wind. So here you can see, I'm trying to scoop the wind, and this really wants me to go or I can generate with my back hand. Now there's one way that I've found that you could figure out if you're sort of off rhythm or not being that efficient. If you hear the wing fluttering a lot, whether you're doing it with one hand or with two hands, then you sort of know you're off rhythm and you're actually probably working harder than you should. So being comfortable, 
generating power with a steady rhythm, whether it's with one hand or whether it's with both hands, is gonna be key. Once you get into pumping, you're gonna to wanna to be able to pump three to six times consecutively without losing rhythm and without losing your breath. So it's important to remember to breathe and to be overall comfortable. So now I learn one way, I'm gonna to wanna to learn how to practice the other way. Learning with my backhand and learning with my front hand. All right, so now that we have seen how we generate power, it's good to practice that a little bit. Some people like to have fun and they like to run down the beach and generate power. You can do whatever you wanna do. The important part is, is that you're having fun and that you're learning something and you're feeling it. Now that we know how to control the wing, generate power, we're eventually gonna be getting to the next part, which is getting up on the board. So some exercises that you could practice right here on the beach are gonna be as follows. So imagining that I was on my board and the direction I'm gonna to wanna to go, I'm going to try to work as almost realistic as possible when doing these exercises so that once I get in the water, I'm gonna be well prepared. So once I'm here on the sand, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I have my wing downwind of me. I'm gonna imagine I'm on the board. Once you're on the board, you're gonna be, depending on the size of the board you're using, you might be either very stable or unstable. In the case of learning, hopefully you have a board that is very user-friendly, that has volume. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later but essentially you wanna find a board with the right amount of volume for your weight and your size and also your conditions because the wind can affect that. But in any case, imagining I'm on my board, I'm gonna to wanna to draw a line. This line shows the center of my board. And if my board ended here and here, now I have my knees at both extremes of the board because I'm using my knees to balance. One thing that's important, if you look here at my feet, is that some people are flat footed. Now to operate from this standpoint, if we're just cruising on our knees, it might be okay. But if we're gonna be trying to stand up, then we definitely wanna be active on our feet. So it's good to be able to get your toes under you because from there, everything will get a little bit easier. But in any case, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So now I'm on my imaginary board. I'm sort of centered on it. I have my knees at the opposite, at each end to maintain balance. What I'm gonna wanna practice is first getting the wing above my head and being able to keep the wing tip, the wing tip down there, off of the water. If it was touching, now I'm in the water. So I wanna, I wanna practice keeping the wing above my head and slightly in front of me so that it brings me out. Now when we spoke about pumping, it's gonna be good here that once we get on our board, which you're gonna see later in this video, that we learn to generate a little bit of speed by pumping our wing. Once we start moving, the exercise that we're gonna wanna practice if we look down at the board, is that we're gonna to wanna to learn how to bring our foot in front of us and pop up. All right, so once we pop up, we wanna be in a bit of a warrior stance, keeping our center of gravity low and keeping that wing above our head. If that wing is too far forward and my butt is out, this is not gonna work. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to get here and get nice and planted. As you can see, my front foot is going in the direction of where I'm going. And my back foot is sort of maintaining position of balance. So it's not completely in, which makes my knees all weird, or completely out, 
which makes my stance all weird. It's in a neutral position where it's comfortable. If you ever did any sort of, uh, any sort of yoga, then they'll call that the warrior stance. So in any case, from here, the best exercise is imagining you're on a board, you're getting stability. This is a little trick right here, where instead of holding the handle, if you have small hands, you hold the leash. And if you hold the leash here, it sort of allows you to grip the board a bit better. So from this position, whether I'm on the balls of my feet or if I'm flat, it doesn't matter. What I wanna do is practice from getting from here up to my knees to a standing. So I bring the wing, I figure out my balance, I bring the wing above me. Now the wing is in front of me, pulling me. From this position, you don't wanna be flying over. Okay, you wanna be nice and planted. You want your arms to be holding the wing and you don't want it to be that the wing is pulling you over one side or to the other. You want your hands to control the wing nicely while your feet and your knees are doing the rest of the work. So my body is staying planted, keeping balance on the board. My hands is keeping the wing above my head, slightly in front of me, and then that's that. So from here, I do one, two, three, four, five pumps, bring my foot forward, and then with my back foot, I just lift off, all right? I don't move it, I lift off. So I'll show you that one more time. We go, we get some power, bring my front foot in front, and I get up. So from this position, I'm gonna be on my board and I'm gonna be moving. If I don't have balance, I'm always gonna be constantly flying off, flying over. So I wanna be able to make sure that I can go from a kneeing position to a standing position, maintaining my balance. This exercise, I'm gonna to wanna to practice it both ways. So I'm on my knees. I get my, I get my knees on the edge of the board to maintain balance. My feet are somewhat together under me, acting like a tripod. I could be sitting in on my, on my heels, but I could also be a little bit off. What I want to avoid is to be completely standing tall because then I might, I might fall over, I might lose balance. So I want to stay small, compact, and just be in control. So keeping my center of gravity well checked and down, staying low. So from here, I do the same thing. I bring the wing over. I do the technique where I'm grabbing the wing. My back hand is grabbing the wing. It brings it over to my front hand. I pull the front hand over and I grab the back handle and then I get some power in it. And then here I'm moving, generating speed. So one thing is, is that if you look at the wingtip, right now it's touching or it's very close. So I want to make sure I keep it off the ground because if it's above my head, it's easier to control. I can see where I'm going, but I don't want it to be behind me like this. I don't want this wing to be behind me like this. I want to keep it in front of me and in control, but I want to keep it as far as I can off the water. You see my front hand is extended and my back hand slightly pulled in so I can have some control over the wing. And then from here, I'm gonna go bring my foot forward and stand, generating power. So already there, that's a lot of exercises to learn in the water. Once you're in the water, you're probably gonna have a moment where your wing is gonna flip over. So here, we'll do a worst case scenario. I'm trying to ride, I'm going, I'm going. And then, whoa, the wing falls. Now from here, since I'm standing on land, it's very easy for me to just grab the wing, lift it up nice and high, and flip it over. But when I'm in the water, probably won't be able to do that. So let's just imagine, I'm there, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm not really in control. The wing touches the sand flips over, I can't recuperate it, I let go, now the wing's upside down. So once I'm in the water, the proper technique to relaunch this is that I wanna get to the center of the wing. From here, 
depending what side I'm going to launch it on, I'm going to go to one side or the other of the wing. In this case, I'm going to the left. So I get myself all the way to the edge of the wing. I'm going to have one hand in the inside, one hand on the outside. And all I'm going to do is lift the wing up, all right? I'm going to lift the wing up into the wind. And then the wind, if we get this right here, it's going to help me flip it over. Once it's flipped over, if I let it go, there's a chance that it flips over again. So what I'm going to do here is hold it with my hands and I'm going to make my way to the center and I'm going to have my wing. And if I'm on the floor, I can also practice this here. So my wing is flipped upside down. Maybe I'm on my board. If I'm on my board, I could be on my heels. I get to the edge of the wing. One hand in the inside, one hand on the outside. I bring the wing into the wind and then the wind helps me flip it over. I don't let go of it right away because if I did, there's a chance that it sort of flips around and then it's gonna, I'm gonna have to do the same thing again. So I hold it, I make my way, I get to the handle and then here I am. So now we've covered the basis of what you should be doing when you're on the land. If you wanna practice before getting to the water. It's good to spend enough time here to where you're comfortable. If you only spend five minutes and you think you're good to go, who knows? Maybe you're a, you're a great water athlete that understands everything right away. But for most of us, we might not be at that level of intuition and skills. So it's good to take some time on the, on the land to really practice and get comfortable. Flying the wing on land is great and it's safe. And this is the first part. Now, as mentioned, I would recommend all types of practices on the, on the land. Walking, turning, generating power, steering. These are all great things. So now, once we've done all of that, what we're gonna be moving into is the water part. So we're going to go up to the board and then we're going to start talking a little bit about the board. So let's head up there. So now we're here at, the, at, uh, at our board and we're going to start talking a little bit about what's going to be happening here. Since we're going to be doing some things, putting on our impact vests and all that, I'm going to take off my wrist leash and I'm going to attach my wing to something. Now, if I were just to leave the wing without attaching it, it's gonna fly away, no bueno. So I'm gonna find something that's sturdy, that's not gonna blow. That's gonna be good. So I found this little nifty chair. Just take the Velcro, attach it. There we are, good to go. That wing's not gonna go anywhere. So now, we practice on the beach, we're comfortable. We're gonna go into the water. You have the right board for you. A learning board, generally, for most people, is gonna be anywhere between 100 liters up to around 130 liters. In this case, we got the Rocket F1 510, which is 110 liters. So having a board with enough volume, but not too much, is gonna be definitely helping you with maintaining that initial balance you're gonna need to get standing and to get foiling when you're winging. If you're new to foiling and you haven't looked at anything else, this is a foil. So the foil is comprised of a few components. You have your front wing, you have your fuselage, you have a stabilizer, you got a mast, and then you got your adapter, This, in this case called a top plate, but you got your top plate, which is mounted to a track system where we're gonna be able to adjust how much lift essentially we're gonna be getting from our wing or from our foil. So just to talk a little bit about this, your front wing will depend a little bit on your weight, your skill level, and what you're doing. For a general rule of thumb, when you're learning, you're gonna be on a foil that is generally a mid-range, mid-aspect um, foil. So it's not a high aspect or 
a super low aspect. Now they're generally coming out with two sort of uh, common foils, which is either high aspect or mid aspect. In this case, this is a gravity 1800 mid aspect wing, which when you're looking into winged sizes, every company uses a different size, but if you're looking in the uh, centimeters uh, cubed, then you're gonna be looking at a wing, a front wing that is anywhere between 1600 up to 2200. There's even bigger, 24, 26. But remember, this is gonna to depend to your weight. Now the fuselage and the stabilizer will probably come in accordance to the front wing. In terms of your mass, this depends. When you're learning, you're gonna to wanna to have a mass that is anywhere between 65 to 75 centimeters long. And then once you know how to ride, you're probably gonna move up to an 85 or 95, most likely an 85, which is very common now. But when we're learning, here we got a 65, so we're gonna be using a 65 centimeter mass. What could affect what mass lengths you're gonna use is the place you're riding at. In Cabarete, we got deep water with some places with reef, but the reef is never uh, coming out of the water. It's usually a couple feet deep. So we can use essentially any mast here without a problem. The only thing we have to do is walk out and then uh, within a matter of a couple meters, we're gonna be already at head high uh, water. So depending on your place, if you're in shallow waters, you might have to use a shorter mast just because of that. So now we got our board, we know about our foil, some other equipment you're gonna to need to practice is a helmet, a leash for your board. This is a waist leash that I'll show you in a moment. In my case, I use goggles that help protect my eyes from the sun and the water and the hat that gives me a little bit more shade. And also stabilizes the helmet a little bit, I feel. And importantly, an impact vest. Now it is optional to use something for your knees, like either using leggings or using some knee pads, some neoprene knee pads that will help you protect your knees. Especially if you're not used to being on your knees that often, then, uh, oh, some money went flying. Catch it. The money's flying, he's getting it. Oh, 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 get it. That's the lottery of the day, guys, in Cabrera. So in any case, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to rig up all my protective equipment, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the foil, and we're gonna go out into the water. So that's it for part one, guys. This is Charles Osterlin with Liquid Blue Cabarete in Cabarete, Dominican Republic. Have a good one. Hey guys. Charles here with Liquid Blue Cabarete in Cabarete, Dominican Republic. We're on part two where we're gonna be talking about the going into the water with wing foiling. So as you can see, I'm not really, uh, I could go wing foiling right now, but I'm not really ready. So I gotta take off my hat, doesn't float. Gotta take off my glasses and I'm gonna have to put on some of this protective equipment. So one thing is with a lot of these sports is that people think it's cool to do it with nothing because they want to be free and whatever. But what's cool is being alive. So as I mentioned, we're going to get our impact vest. So far, there's no real uh, dedicated wing foiling impact vest. So we're using kite impact vests, but you could use a wakeboarding one or anything that is your size and comfortable. This one doesn't have a zipper. It's a little bit tight. It's new. There we go. So, I got my impact vest. I got some little drawstrings here. Nice little drawstrings just to keep it down. All right. And the next part of the protection that we're gonna want, or at least that I use, this is a preference right here, but I use these amphibian goggles. So I'm just gonna put it around my neck for now. A hat. Just strap it down actually while we're here. And I wanna pick a helmet that fits me well. So medium, as for me. And we're good. So a little bit of space, 
I'm gonna close it up, just make sure it's nice and uh, fitted properly. And then as mentioned, this is a preference, but you could use a waist leash where I'm gonna be attaching the board leash. In a previous video, I showed where this waist leash, waist leash comes from. And this is actually from a kite. When you get a brand new kite, it comes with a bit of a Velcro rope. And I figured out it doubles as a waist leash. So I'm gonna take this leash right here, wrap it around myself. And actually, I'll put on my shirt. Nah, we won't do that. We'll go out like this. So, put them on my waist leash before I go. And now we got our board leash that I'm just gonna leave right here. So if you've never attached a board leash, what you're gonna need is a, you're gonna need a board rope. You take your leash, it's a little bit sandy. That's all good. And we're just gonna wrap up this board leash right here. So in part one, I spoke a little bit about what the foil was, the different parts, the board sizes. But what's important to remember here is that when we're learning how to uh, wing foil, the board we're gonna be learning on is a little bit bigger, it's a little bit heavier, and for a lot of people, it weighs a lot, so it's hard to manage. So since it's all, all these components where it's a little bit heavier, it could be theoretically dangerous if it hits you in the head or not. So it's important to have good knowledge and understanding of your board because it is one of the bigger pieces of equipment that will be attached to you. So with this specific board, when we're carrying it, we have a board handle, uh, uh, yeah, board handle, where it's gonna be nice and easy to carry it when we're in and out of the water, when we're going in and out of the water. And then other than that, when we're gonna be here on land talking about it, we're not gonna have to worry about that. So the board, as you can see, is attached to the foil. And the foil and the board are going in the same direction. This is something important to remember because your foil is not going one way and your board another. Everything is going in line. And with that, now that we know that the foil and the board are in line, wherever the board is pointed, we know our foil is pointed. But also, our board and our foil are both parallel to each other up and down. So if our board is flat, then we know our foil is flat. And this is important because with a foil, if you haven't looked at any videos of how it works, essentially it's like an airplane. Once you get speed, forward momentum, you start getting lift. Some foils lift more than others. For example, a bigger foil will have more lift, but also will be slightly slower. And a foil with that smaller will has less lift and potentially will be faster. But then also you run into the different aspects like a mid aspect, a low aspect and a high aspect, which also affect the performance of that foil. But essentially, like we mentioned, with a beginner foil is gonna be anywhere between a low, which is not that common anymore, or a mid aspect wing, front wing that is, in the sizing of anywhere between 1600 uh, centimeters cube up to 22, 2400, depending on your uh, size, conditions, etc. So now, knowing that wherever our board is pointed is where our foil is pointed, and whatever our board is doing on the top is what our foil is doing on the bottom. So if we see the nose of the board pointed up, then we know that the foil is gonna be pointed up. And if the nose is going down, then the foil is also going down. And if the board is flat, then the foil is flat. So with that, as we accelerate, naturally the foil is gonna get lift. If we imagine that there's water right here at this level and we're floating right on top, if we start getting lift, eventually we're gonna breach out of the water. And that's what happens with some people is that if they don't know what's happening with their foil and they don't understand, they're always gonna be breaching out of the water. So to compensate for that, if we're getting that lift and it's bringing us upwards, what we're gonna have to do is probably apply some pressure somewhere on the front right so that the board or in this case the foil sort of plan out and maintains a forward trajectory but at 
a um, angle that is not bringing us down into the water or up out of the water. We're gonna see a little bit about that in the water when we go in. So in any case, now that I got all my protective gear on, I got my wing, I got my board leash, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into the water. So we're gonna pause the video right here and we're gonna go to the next part once we put the GoPro into the water mode. All right guys, so the sound might have changed a little bit, but the idea is the same. So I got my wing connected to me. I'm about to go into the water. So I'll make sure that my wing is connected to my wrist. And since I'm using waist leash, a waist <laughs> leash, I don't need to attach it to my uh, to any of my ankles. So I'm just gonna attach it to my waist. I'm gonna slide this to the back. So, you see it's all out of my hands and we're good to go. So now, when I'm gonna walk in, I wanna make sure since my foil is not sharp, but it's definitely sharp enough to damage my wing, I wanna keep them separate. So I have my wing downwind from me, and I got my foil upwind from me. I'm gonna carry the board as so. Trying to make sure that nothing is touching. I do realize that I have my goggles around my neck, but I think it's important that you can see where my eyes might be looking when I'm doing certain actions, so you have a better understanding of what's going on. Depending on where you live, here, luckily, if we look out at the ocean, we don't have that big of a shore break. And the wind comes right onto the shore. So we're, at, we're pretty lucky right now in those regards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk out, keeping my wing above, out of the water. And I'm still ankle deep, so I can't leave my foil to fall. A little bit further. I'm gonna flip the board over here. So here I just direct the board out until I'm about waist deep. So if you remember some of the exercises that we had. the foil over. All right. So if we come over over here, a little bit in front, come on under. All right. So now I'm in the water and I got my board, I got my wing. The wind is a little bit off from when we began filming, but it's going to be good enough to uh, get the point across. So here, once I'm in the water, I got my learning board, got my foil under. What I want to avoid, if we look close, come over here and look above from the top, we can see that the foil is right there. So I really want to avoid kicking. We can even bring the camera underwater. So I really want to avoid kicking a lot, my feet, because I might kick the foil and I'm gonna hurt myself. I'm not gonna cut it, most likely, but I'm definitely gonna bruise it and it's not gonna be fun. So now I'm getting out into the water. Let me just dip myself get one with the ocean and from here what I got to do is get onto the board if I let go of the wing there's a high chance that it's gonna flip around and it's gonna do something but in any case the first step is getting onto the board and being comfortable finding my center of balance so once I'm on the board and I find my center of balance what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up here to this side. As you can see, my wing is downwind from me. I'm on my board. The waves are pushing me in, the current's sort of pushing me to shore. But I'm just here chilling, trying to find, trying to find out my space. From this point on, I'm gonna get onto my knees. Now, I could have done two options. I could have either brought my wing to me or I could get up onto my knees first. In any case, the end goal is the same. So just stay close to you. So now that I have 
the wing in my hand and I'm on my board, like that exercise that we practice, I'm gonna be on my knees. From here, what, what I'm gonna do is the exercise of bringing the, fo the wing above my head and then letting it pull me out. As it's pulling me out, I'm gonna wanna make sure I keep a bit of weight on the opposite side so I don't get pulled over. And that's gonna depend. So I bring the wing over me and I'm gonna pull out. All right, I try to keep the wing up out of the water and go. I'll come back to you here. Yep. Building. Yep. So here, I'm just messing around, taxing myself back and forth. From this exercise, what's important is to be able to go a little bit into the wind. I'm not really using the wing, but I am going to start messing around to generate power. I'm comfortable on my knees is going to be standing. So here I'm going to try to generate a bit of power, bring my front foot and stand. is if you're riding in a place with big waves then you want to make sure that maybe someone has an eye out on you maybe even helps you take your board or take your wing so in this case since there's not much waves and I can handle it by myself the first step I'm gonna to want to do is detach my board from myself because if anything happens I'd rather have my board fly away from me than fly into my board so in any case let me just take two hands and it's off. So now with my board leash off, I'm going to bring my board closer to me. I'm going to hold it. From here, I'm also going to take my wrist leash off. So it's not in the way. Alright, so now I got my wrist leash off, I got my board off. I'm going to flip my board over. Walk my way out, keeping my wing in the air and my foil away from me up into the wind. 
or swim, enjoy, and remember, it's all about having fun. So that being said, it's a wrap. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, uh, this will probably be on the internet, so leave your comments below. If you want to reach out to us, Liquid Blue Cabaretti. And we always check our emails and we always try to answer questions and help people out. And if you want to come down to Dominican Republic, learn how to kite, learn how to wing, have some fun, explore, adventure, travel, eat, sleep, repeat, do all the, just enjoy life, then uh, see you here. And until then, see you next time.